They're actually pretty fun. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever actually no. ridden on one? So, uh -uh. I'm ruining the segue here by talking <laughs> oh. about segways. Um, but when I was in the Marines, we actually had two of them in our unit on Indian Head because oh. we wanted to figure out a way to make them um, usable for our mission. Because our mission from my unit was to drag out bodies in case of a mass casualty uh, NBC event. You know, tonight's Halloween, so. Um... <laughs> What the way, the day we're recording this today is Halloween. They're they're listening. They're they are listening to this on Halloween. No, they're not. Stay that says on. November seventh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't know what day it is because we just pre-record. I don't know. Yeah. I'm out. Anyway, dead bodies. So I was in extract platoon, and our job was to drag drag out casualties. But we were actually looking at ways that we could use segways. Um, if we could, you know, huh. get them purchased for our unit and yeah. pull out people using segways. Yeah. We didn't end up doing it. We only had two, and we mostly just used them for dog and pony shows with congressmen. <laughs> with congressmen. Um, but, which was a lot of our job, oh, showing man. off to congressmen to get more funding. Oh, jeez. But those things are actually pretty cool. And you can use them uh, hands-free, so you can actually, like, hold on to a rifle while you're on a segway. And it just balances for you. Yep, and wow. you can move forward and stuff like that. Um, we had some guys that could use them to jump over logs and, and low-level debris and stuff like that. Wow. So you can technically go upstairs on them. It's just mostly it's training you yeah. to not second-guess right. the, the, the gyrocopter yeah, yeah, yeah. thing inside of it and not and to lean the right way and stuff like that. But they're actually pretty fun. So huh. I know they're dorky. Part of the reason they're dorky is because you have to wear a helmet while you're <laughs> driving yeah. around on them in D.C. Uh, but they are they are pretty fun when you get them up to full speed. Yeah. So what, like two miles an hour? No, dude, they can go f <laughs> thirty, uh, fifteen or twenty. I oh, think wow. is what they were getting them up to. I just think of Mo uh, Paul Blart Paul when Blart. I think of him, or yeah. Weird Al, or the the inventor of the Segway who fell off a cliff riding his oh, Segway and died. And <laughs> that's like the Adkin, the guy who made Doctor Adkins. He died from heart heart attack or something. <laughs> I'm like. So yeah, you love your job. I love my job now too. My old job, I got to use segways. <laughs> Speaking of loving Seg your job, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hating your job and what you can do about it. Yeah, it's this, been a long time since we've had to cover this topic. Yeah, huh? <laughs> I um, I was talking to an old coworker, and she was just explaining to me certain things that. And I was just like, yeah, I'm glad I'm not there anymore, you know, because he talked, uh, the, the guy Trent Ham from uh, Simple Dollar talks about how he had um, two jobs that he hated mm -hmm. in his life. And one, one of the reasons why he hated one job was because there's just poisonous people there. There was like two other coworkers and one guy never did any work mm -hmm. and just would be so negative and just, just very poisonous and, um, I think at the end that guy got fired or whatnot because yeah. he didn't have he didn't have anything to produce after like six months. Yeah, and the other th reason why he hated another job was because it was just paper shuffling and he could never have any he could never improve anything because mm -hmm. management didn't want that they just wanted him to do what they hired him to do. Yep. So that goes that along with the, familiar, the huh? autonomy. Yeah, that sounds very. Uh, <laughs> familiar to me and he actually said at the very end of that he said i loved my co-workers yeah on yeah that one. but even that you know the, it wasn't the enough. thing that was bad on the first one once it got resolved couldn't make the second one better <laughs> right so yeah so he he hated his job yep hated himself and he just felt forced like he had to work there because um of walking on that financial tightrope, mm -hmm. you know, just credit card debts and just the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He had to have a job to pay for that stuff, yeah. which I think is a reason why people stay in jobs they hate because their lifestyle is up here and they're in debt, but they have to pay for it and they don't quit the lifestyle part. So they just stay at the job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. I read those articles and I can't help but look for autonomy, master, and purpose. You mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit, but those are Dan Pink's three drivers of human performance that he talks about in the book Drive. And in the first job, it was autonomy that he was lacking. He didn't have the ability to choose who he works with. 
mm-hmm. and for what purposes. <laughs> yeah. And he actually, it kind of, reading into the article, you could kind of tell he actually enjoyed the work yeah. because he was solving creative problems and uh-huh. he had to create something from nothing. Mm-hmm. But just the people that he had to be associated with in that yeah. stunk. Yeah. And then in the second one, it was the purpose. Like, what am I here for? Why am? Why are we just, I'm basically taking papers from this stack and moving them over to this stack yeah. and that's yeah. my life. <laughs> um, but I think autonomy, master, and purpose... Dan Pink says those run contra to the carrot and stick method of human performance, which Mm -hmm. is carrots will give you bonuses, sticks will fire you if you don't do what you are required to do. Mm. But people actually don't want to be motivated by carrots or sticks. Um, Somebody in a horrible job who gets a bonus, as someone at this table has done in the past, (laughs) um, that doesn't last long because it's not ultimately what's your what you're there for i'm not here to get two percent extra per year i'm here to do something that i don't absolutely hate Mm -hmm. and dread doing every single week Um, it's not the money because i could i mean certain people they love doing charitable work and they don't mm -hmm. get paid for it but they love doing it because the people Mm -hmm. that they're surrounded with yeah you know so it's maslow's hierarchy of needs once you've got a basic subsistence covered enough to pay bills and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you want to look for something higher than yeah. that that satisfies you. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if I make sixty thousand a year, or if I make sixty-two thousand a year, it's not going to make a huge difference no. in my life. That two thousand dollars is going to get spread out to be like an extra, you know, Ten two times eating yeah. out yeah. each month. <laughs> um, but if I love what absolutely love what I do, then that sixty versus sixty two is not gonna be you know, if I love what I do for sixty and this other place comes along and offers me a job that I don't love for sixty two or even eighty or you know oh, yeah. you wouldn't even think about it right. uh leaving a place that you love working right. at. So Yeah. I had a, a I had a few poisonous people at my last job, like mm-hmm. this one lady. Oh, my gosh. She was so negative. She would be so critical over everything. And I, I started to understand how she would be, too, because she would never talk to you outside of a meeting. Mm-hmm. She would just wait until a meeting and then just Bring try to— up em- in front of everybody. Yeah, embarrass you. And then the other— my su- usually my supervisor would be like oh yeah that's a good point why don't you do that like she would never come to me Mm. and one time i was like i had like my laptop hooked up to the um uh computer screen so everybody could see and i was trying to do something in excel and she was like somebody needs to show charlie how to use a computer Mm. i'm just like um i don't that's not no (laughs) yeah it's just poisonous just like yeah Yep, I know. Yeah. Have you about, ever worked with anybody like that? About 65 or 70 of our 103 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you complaining about your, oh, your situation man. and trying to figure out a way out of it? Yeah. So that's why I joke that it's been a while since <laughs> we've done this episode. Because yeah. <laughs> it seemed like last winter, last fall, that was all we <laughs> did was talk about. I hate my job. I would just come home. <laughs> And just sulk. Janie got tired of listening to me every night. Yep. You know. Yeah, it but. sucks the life out of you and makes you not do anything else. Yeah. And now you've got tons of time and you're creative and we're on video now. Yeah. So. <laughs> tons of time to have self doubt about myself now. Sure. <laughs> but that's all Lots right. of thinking time. Yeah. Way too much. That's why I watch so much TV. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Anything to fill the <laughs> void, <laughs> anything to quiet the voices in my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people live on this financial tightrope, so they just feel stuck yeah. at that job they hate. And some people just do that their whole life, yeah. you know. And just, I think about that because I think the moment I just really had to do something about my previous job was my supervisor called me in and we revamped my resume. I remember. I was just like. I don't, I don't want, want this. He's I don't like, want to be positioned for higher to, responsibility yeah. here. <laughs> and then I went to a job fair thing at another competing company. And I was just like, there's got to be more than this. I'm just going to be feeling like this in two years, yeah. you know. So I just had to just change. And 
one of the things that helped us out was we had no we had no debt, just our house payment, mm -hmm. and got the emergency fund. So I wouldn't have been able to do the daycare had I had we been fifty sixty thousand dollars in debt. Yeah, like we were. Yeah, the the reasons why you can't you can whittle away at those. So yeah, even for us, I was the sole income provider. Um, scared about health insurance all the same excuses oh, yeah. that i hear from everybody else but all of those things are solvable the problem is you've got problems that need to be solved before you can get to those yeah yeah <laughs> and so you need to get away from living paycheck to paycheck if mm. you can't even survive a speed bump of a week without a paycheck yeah then don't you're quit not, your job you're not there yet. yet yeah yeah but these things can be solved so let's get to the point where you could survive a week if your pay got bumped back a couple days Let's get to the point where you could survive a month. Let's get to the point where you could survive two or three months. Mm -hmm. And then that just opens up the world of possibilities. Because some people won't even change jobs from one well-paying job to another well-paying job because they can't cover the two or three week transition right. period yeah. between, you know, here's my last paycheck here and I'll get paid for these first two weeks at this other job in two weeks. Yeah. So missing that gap kind of thing. Right. Like, but it's those, such a big inconvenience or something. Yeah. <laughs> and some that's called, I mean, the word for that is called switching costs. And that's what keeps people from doing basically everything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, companies know that you don't want to switch. Um, they know how much of a hassle it's, it is to switch cell phone companies. So they try and make it even more of a hassle. Yeah. Or other ones will, like, t try to take away the hassle by paying all your fees and stuff like that. Right. But employers know it, too. They know if they can keep you on there for nine or ten months, uh -huh. you're going to be there for five or ten years <laughs> after that point. <laughs> because just the whole cost of meeting new employees or switching health insurance plans or, mm -hmm. you know, the unknowns of going somewhere else... Um, are huge and yeah. will keep you there locked in mm -hmm. uh, even to the point of it's it's painful but it's not painful enough to to seek a way out of it mm -hmm. so I, real quick i just thought of comedian pablo francisco where mm -hmm. <laughs> talking about the pain of switching mm -hmm. he, he was making fun of those um all state commercials with that guy from 24 the guy with the really uh, deep voice yeah or the chaos which one is all state um, There's the one guy who's like, I'm a window through your, or I'm a tree branch through your window. I don't know if it's that guy. Late at night. The president. Mayhem. Of, not mayhem. chaos. Mayhem. Okay. But he was like, at all state, we'll oh, yeah, tell, we'll tell uh, your old company to F all for you, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, just because they'll pay your fees or yeah. whatever. <laughs> yep. But yeah. So going back to the 60 versus $80,000 a year jobs. Let's say you hate the job at 60 and somewhere else comes along that offers you 64, you probably won't take that one. Right. Because $4,000, even though it's a little bit more, isn't enough to break that switching cost right. pain. Yeah. Now, if somewhere came along, we've all got that point where it's like, oh, well, I wouldn't take 64, but 68, I'd be on board yeah. for that. Right. Some people would be like, I'd jump at 64 <laughs> because yeah. the pain is so. Bad. little yeah, that yeah. the switching costs don't matter at this right. point anymore so other people are like in our cases i will take the jump from 64 to 40 <laughs> yeah. because it's so worth it yeah. or something like that you know i'm feeling or, good or, too or 20 or 12 or yeah. something like that like at this point it doesn't even matter no i just I'll figure that change. out eventually yeah so yeah but it does take work uh, it took me i i i feel that i got that I was lucky that it mm -hmm. only took me a year to yeah. get to making more than I did as an employee. That's what I was so. going to ask you. You know how like you just just broke ties like basically in one day with yeah, the previous Yeah, it's called job. getting fired. Okay. Well, I was <laughs> putting it lightly, but yeah, yeah. you get fired. Do do you think that that had to happen because if you put in a month or two weeks do you think it, you would have settled back in and had a good day and then be like well i don't need to start my own company i don't think that would have happened that's what kept me somewhere for five years was just good days and bad days mm -hmm. so um i was at the same employer for five years 
there were good days, there were bad days. A couple different times I looked at building something on the side. I looked at getting out of the profession entirely. Mm -hmm. I looked at doing something else within the profession. Um, but it wasn't until I switched from that employer to another one that I was only at for 10 months. For me, that was my big switching cost moment. Oh, okay. And that was a raise that took me from that employer or from the old employer to the new one is the promise of, you know, making a couple extra hundred or a couple extra hundred thousands, <laughs> a couple extra thousands a year um, broke that for me. But then getting there within the first two months of being at that employer, realizing it was no different than the one I left. Yeah. That was where I was like, I need an exit. It's yeah. not going to be one employer versus another. Right. that's going to make the difference. Yeah. Now that, they sped up my timeline because my goal was to stay there th for another year and build something slowly. Mm -hmm. They, I talked about it. They t they heard about it. Um, in a conversation over lunch, realized this was not where I was going to be long term, and they sped up my timeline to the end of tax season. So they kept me on for an extra three months instead of eleven mm -hmm. that I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of forced me to get out, but. Yeah. I don't think I would have never left had that not happened, but I do think I would have been much slower and ended up with a lot lower results mm. had I stuck around. Right. Because my, my goal was, as they recommend in this, build a side gig, something you're doing in the evenings. Yeah. And that was my goal, is build it up to the point after 11 months where it was ready to replace my income. But knowing me, not starving would have not motivated me as much as starving did. Right, right. So I yeah. was desperate and starving, and I got something going. Yeah. I probably, knowing me and planning on quitting in December, I probably wouldn't have started till like, October. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hadouken!